never hear a liberal preach what I'm about to preach to you. It is appointed to men once to die. There's a lot of things in life that are uncertain. There's certainly a lot of things that are uncertain. We make plans about a lot of things and they don't work out the way you planned them. They certainly don't. You anticipate certain things to happen. They don't happen the way you anticipate them. Sometimes experience can, in the past can prove to be wrong in the future. It doesn't happen the way you thought it was going to happen. But there's one thing you can be certain of this morning. You can be absolutely and completely certain of this, that you're going to die. That is the most certain thing that a human being can know. And I want to emphasize that point to you this morning. It is absolutely, completely certain that you're going to die. A lot of people have the idea that, they, that the earth and life is just one big party. 24-7, that's what you're here for. You're here to party. You're here to have a big time. And then when, it, when life's over, then you lay down in bed and gather your feet up and pull the covers up over you and say, well, goodbye world, it's over now, see you later. And that's it. But it doesn't happen that way. Life is not like that. You don't know how you're going to come down to your end. You may get sick and languish for a long time, but you may walk out that back door and drop in that parking lot. You may pull out here on Woodrow Drive and something happens, some mishap. So anything can happen. We don't know. It is uncertain at how it's going to happen. But there's one thing for certain, you're going to die. And the absolute most certain thing on the face of this earth is the fact that you will come to the end of your life and it is the very thing that very few people make any provision for whatsoever. You've worked for 30, 40 years for some company and all that and, and then the day of your retirement, you drop dead. You drop dead. You see, retirement is not absolute. It's not certain. It is not certain that you'll ever retire. It's not. It is not. It is not certain that you'll retire. But it is certain that you'll die. It is absolutely, completely certain that the day is going to come when your life is going to end on this earth. Have you made preparation? Have you made preparation? Have you prepared yourself for that day? For it is coming. It is coming. And there's not one thing you can do to stop it. That day is coming. Are you ready? You say, well now, preacher, I just don't want to think about it. Not thinking about it is not going to change anything. Denying it is not going to change it. Saying it's not going to happen except for some long time off into the future. That's not so. Teenagers die. Young people die. Kids die. People die in their midlife. They die at all ages. Death is no respecter of age. I've been at a point in my life where I thought I might die. What'd you do, preacher? Did you think about your religion? I didn't give it five seconds. Amen. What about the people that you didn't even bother? What about this? None of it. Just the name of Jesus. I grabbed it. I latched on to the name of Jesus. That's the only comfort there is of this world. And I'm going to tell you right now, when you really take hold of him and he becomes a comfort to you, that reminds you and reassures you in your soul that you're a real believer. Yes! Did you hear what I said? When you're down and flat and it's out and you're out at the count, it's the one you're calling out to and take hold of and get comfort from. That's the one you believe in. Some of you don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Your comfort is in a prayer you prayed. Your comfort is in a catechism that you were uh, approved by. Your comfort is in your church. And there is no comfort in that hour but in one man. Christ Jesus the Lord. And he does give comfort. He does give comfort. He does give assurance. Do you believe? <laughs> yes, I believe. You better believe I do. Oh, yeah, I believe. I believe he's alive. If I didn't believe he was alive, I'd close my book up and go get drunk. <laughs> Eat, drink, and be merry. For tomorrow you die. Nothing to live for. Yeah, he's alive. He lives, he lives, he lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's way. He lives, he said. And he said, because I live, ye shall live also. In Revelation 1, he said, I am the living one. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, he said, I'm alive forevermore and have the keys of death and hell. His life gives him authority. Not only is he worthy, but because he lives, he has authority to open and shut. I open, no man shuts. I shut, no man opens. And all judgment is given to me. Bless his holy name. Folks, it's about the Lord Jesus. This is all about the Son of God. Now, a lot of folks are so tied up with their life. 
They're so concerned about daily affairs, the this and that, all the mechanics, the nuts and bolts, and everything that they're doing, the shopping trips, and the vacations, and all this stuff. And that's all they think about is this present evil world. And the apostle Peter said, that's not gonna do any good either. He said, you better start looking afar off. You better start looking to the future. You better start looking to where you're going. You better start thinking about your eternity. Unless you are a dog or a cat, or unless you're a hog lying somewhere with a slop trough and you're satisfied just to eat and breathe, you should be thinking. You should be concerned about where you came from and where you're going. God made you a lot higher than the animals. He gave you a brain. He gave you the thought of eternity in your soul. Eternity, my friend, is either a glory for you or it's hell, fire, and damnation. Eternity is either a day when the gates open and as Dwight L. Moody said as he was leaving his body, he said to those around him, he said, is this it? Is this what I've been waiting for? Hallelujah! And I left and his body fell back to the bed. That's the way to leave, amen. The Bible said it's appointed a man once to die and then the judgment. We're all coming to that point. Every one of us are going to come to the time if the Lord Jesus doesn't come back soon when we cross over Jordan, when we leave this world and go to that world. Does it scare you to death? Do you shiver at night? Do you think? Is it a horrid thought about where you're going? Do you are not certain about your eternity? What if you're gonna die? Are you gonna die? Are you gonna, to, are you gonna to go to hell? Do you not know? The apostle Peter here in Peter talks about a mist. He talks about God reserving and preserving those that are going off to a mist of darkness forever. Have you ever heard anybody screaming as they go into hell? Have you ever heard anybody as they begged God and there was no forgiveness for them? A lot of people pray, but they don't understand that if the Holy Ghost hasn't convicted you and brought you to repentance, everybody's like Pharaoh. Everybody can pray a sinner's prayer, but a sinner's prayer does not get you saved. The only thing that can get you saved is the grace of God received when he comes to you. And he could come to you right now. He could come to you anytime. I had a man look at me one time years ago and he said, now preacher, he said, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. He said, I'm gonna have a big time, I'm gonna party. And he said, then when I get ready to die, he said, then I'll ask God to save me. And he said, therefore I get the best of both worlds. I get everything this world has to offer. And then when I get ready to die, I'm just gonna say, Jesus, I wanna go to heaven, come into my heart, and I'm gonna leave here and I'm going to glory. What a fool, my friend, what a fool. What a fool, it's so sad, but people believe that. I've had people say, now preacher, you enjoyed your sin, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna get everything I can out of life, and then when it comes time for me to die, I'll get right with God. Like the choice is in your hands to choose the moment and the place. Like you are the Lord God Almighty of your life and you're not. The Bible said today is the day of salvation. Now is the appointed time. Your today may be today. Your today may be tomorrow. You stand up, you say to me, now, preacher, I don't believe in hell. What do you base that on? Your feelings? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now that I am not gonna base my eternity on how you feel. Somebody can come to me and honest preacher, there is no hell. Tell me something, dear friend. How did you discover that? Have you been over there? If you're living a godless life and you're an atheist or an agnostic, Christ rejecter, you can be certain of this, the day will come when you will discover firsthand that there is a hell. And when that day comes, there's nothing you can do about it because you're gonna be there. You're gonna leave this world without God and without Christ and you go to hell. What do you think the cross is for? Why do you think we preach the blood? Why were we singing about Calvary this morning? Why were we singing about being saved? Because my friend, that there is a place that you don't wanna to go to. People live like there is no judgment. They live like there is no hereafter. They live like they'll never give an account for their sins. They murder today like it's nothing. I have never seen in my life as many murderers walking around as we have today. They just blow each other away like it's no big deal. But the Bible says the murderer will have his place in hell. We've come to a point in our culture and our society where we are amoral, not immoral. Immoral is an individual that knows there's a morality. An amoral individual says there is no morality. I live as I please like a dog and that's exactly the way people are living. We've gotten to the point now where it's just simply passe. It doesn't matter anymore. There's no meaning to anything. Whatever you feel good about doing, do it. 
For there is no fear of God in their eyes. Nobody fears God anymore. And I marvel at how people live godless, wicked lives, self selfish lives, and are shocked when something happens. I marvel at how deceived people can be to think that you can live like hell itself and then expect God just to sit back and approve of the kind of life you live. Sin and Satan will keep you in this la-la land where you think that you're just going to live forever and you can just live any way you please and life is just one big sinning party and then when you get ready somewhere way off in the future, then you're just going to leave out of a big party. My friend, you're going to die. You're going to die. It's appointed to men once to die. Death is coming. Some of you, it's closer than you think. Some of you may be dead before the year's out. Some of you may be dead before the week's out. Some of you may be dead before the sun goes down. You do not know when it's coming. But I want to warn you again. Death is coming. It is certain. It is sure. It is the most certain thing there is on the face of this earth. The government can't change it. Education can't change it. Money can't change it. Associations can't change it. Your religion can't change it. Nothing can alter the fact that you're going to die. Are you ready? I know you prepared your house. I know you prepared your income. I know you prepared your marriage, your children. You planned out your whole life. But you've made no plans whatsoever for where you're headed when you leave this world. Hell is a place. It is a place that existed before you were ever born. It is there. It's going to be there. And there's nothing you can do to change that one bit whatsoever. It doesn't make any difference if the churches today have stopped preaching on hell. If the preachers don't preach on hell. If the seminaries and Bible colleges don't teach the young men about hell. If they extricate it from the Bible and make no difference whatsoever it is still a place that you must deal with one day somebody my friend died this morning and they went to hell somebody took their last breath this day they drew their last breath and awakened in hell what a shock it must have been there is no salvation in hell there's no savior in hell there's no bible in hell there's no blood in hell there's no altars in hell there's no forgiveness in hell what Whatever goes to hell stays in hell. It's permanent. It's settled. It's settled. It's over with. What you've done in this life is what determines where you go. When you die without God, you go to hell. That's why Jesus came 2,000 years ago. That's why he died at the cross at Calvary. He didn't die to make you rich. He didn't die because of who you are. He didn't die to create this hell hole you know about. He died to keep you out of hell. That's why he went to the cross. That's why it's so horrible. That's why it took the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's why the Bible said God made him to be sin for us who knew no sin. That's why Calvary was so horrendous. Because he would keep you out of hell. There's only one name on the face of this earth that can keep you out of hell. It's not Baptist. It's not Methodist. It's not Presbyterian. It's not Catholic. It's not Jew. There's just one name that can keep you out of hell and it's the name of Jesus how many has ever heard of Oliver B. Green Oliver B. Green when he was a little boy there was a wicked man that lived in the town where he lived he said that man came time for him to die and he was laying on his deathbed he said he rose up in bed he'd been in a coma apparently or something for some time but all of a sudden his eyes just popped open wide and he rose up as, as far as he could in that bed and he said can't you see them they're coming they're coming down the sidewalk can't you see them they're coming after me and they said no there's nobody out there and tried to come Oh, yes, there he is. They're coming for me. And, he, and they said to him, oh, no, 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 you're just, you're, just, you're, just, you're just hallucinating. And then he said, they're coming through the door. They're coming through the door. They're coming to get me. They're coming after me. And he screamed before he died and said, oh, they're dragging me down to hell. I'm going to the pit. I'm burning. And Oliver Green said, those that stood by that bed that time, watched that man die, said it changed their life from then on. They never were the same again to watch a soul die and go to hell. 
You can cover up your sin to your spouse, to your children, to your parents, to your friends. But buddy, when you go into a service and something opens you up, and I mean opens you up and says, I know everything about everything, and starts naming it, dates, times, places. That's conviction. Because he points you to Christ. Are you listening? Are you listening to me this morning? Are you listening? Some of you are doing things that you would not want these people to know. You certainly would not want your wife or your husband to know. You are doing things that you think you're doing in secret. You're hiding, sneaking around doing it. And my friend, the day will come you and your sin will find you out. You can be certain of this. Your sin will find you you out it will find you out god is not mocked do you understand the horror that's going to flood your soul the moment you wake up in hell when you realize that there's nothing around you but damnation and sorrow and burning in hell can you imagine what that'll be like there's nobody to plead with there's nobody to cry out to there's nobody to go to to get help you're in hell to lift up your eyes in hell it's got to be the worst shock that could possibly happen to anybody. Not dying. You're going to die. You'll prepare yourself, some of you, for that. You know you're going to leave here. That's not a shock. The shock is waking up where you don't expect to be. Earth's greatest, finest go to hell. Kings and queens and preachers and popes and nuns and evangelists. The very wealthy, the very poor, the gifted, the privileged, the authors, the musicians, the actors, the athletes, presidents, Supreme Court justices, dictators, murderers, thieves, atheists, agnostics, Christ rejectors all. That's who goes to hell. You don't go to hell because you're rich. You don't go to hell because you're poor. You don't go to hell because you're the president or because you're the Supreme Court justice, a king or a pope. You don't go to hell for that. You go to hell when you reject Christ. That's why you go to hell. It's not about you and me. It's about you and this. It was here before you ever showed up. It'll be here when you're long gone. It was here before your school was ever built. It'll be here when your school is falling in ruins. This is the eternal word of the living God. The issue is not Preacher Lawson. The issue is God's word. What are you going to do with the book? If the Bible didn't exist, I might say, well, you know, every man does the best he can. Follow whatever light you got. If it feels good, do it. We go through life once and live it with gusto. You know, eat, drink, and be merry. For tomorrow we die. But there's a Bible. If you were living in some pagan dark country out here in the bush somewhere, couldn't read, didn't know zip, but you don't. You got a Bible right here in front of you. Well, preacher, I want to tell you the truth. I've never read it. That's the truth. Most Christians haven't read it. They've never read it through from Genesis to Revelation. The sad state is that in the church today, most people are as ignorant of the Bible as they can be. That's why they can be tossed from one church to the next church, one doctrine to the next doctrine. It's because we are such a flim flam bunch because we don't know anything about God or His Word. It's a sad commentary, but the Bible Bible has not changed. Hell is real. I don't make any difference to me if you're a professor at some college or university in anthropology, archaeology, and what have you. One day we'll all stand before God. One man in particular gives a lengthy testimony of how that he had died and he went to hell. And it was there in hell that he began to see the most grotesque things that he could ever imagine. He felt the flames of hell. He knew he was condemned. He was in the pit of hell. But he was brought back to life. I went my whole life not believing that that hell was real. I said, you know, I didn't want to believe in all that dark stuff, you know. There's no hell. I was a very angry kid. I lived a life where I wasn't afraid of anything. And if I was angry about it, you were going to know it. I was vindictive. I did some really violent things to people. But when I'm laying on my deathbed and knowing that I'm going to die, guess who I thought about? What if there is a heaven and a hell? I just knew that I was going to hell. And before I knew it, I fell off the couch onto the floor. It was pitch 
black dark. The best way I could describe it, it was a darkness within a darkness. My inner being, my spirit man, went perpendicular to my body and I was like immediately ejected and transported and I, I all of a sudden was thrust into a spiritual dimension. And that night is as I would be laying there in bed. As I'm laying there in bed, I would begin to fade away. I would begin to fade away and as I would fade away, I would begin to go down. It, now, it was like darkness. It was like, it was so, so dark. It was like, the very darkness just penetrated into your very, very being. And as I left, and I can tell you I left my body because I remember when I came back into my body. And I looked into something I can only describe as blacker, an abyss that was blacker than black. This was eternal. This thing, the more I looked at it, the more it closed to where it was, I was almost by this white portal. It was very dark. You couldn't see anything at all. It seemed like forever. And the, it, it, it earthquaked. And I looked behind me and I can hear screaming. It's all red and black. Turn around, turn around, get out of here. It sounded like people burning. People that were just, just burning that couldn't find a cure or a fix to anything. It was just the worst. And I remember being afraid, gripping the steering wheel. And all of a sudden I was like, I'm back to my body in the trailer room. And I began going down and down and down like a deep uh, pit. And I saw smelling the stench of hell. It's the most rottenest thing that you can ever smell in your life. In fact, you can't even imagine it. Now there are people that talk about the, the, a light there are people that talk about floating above. There are people that talk about a feeling of warmth and love. I didn't feel any of that. I felt none of that. I felt untold terror. Untold terror. Because I knew that if I ever went all the way, if I slipped all the way, I would never get back. They was calling my name. Boy, say, we got you. We got you. We got you. You belong to us now. I saw souls, lost souls that was in torment in the lake of fire. They was crying and calling on God. They was hopeless. And I called on the Lord. Jesus, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus. And soon I called on his name. I saw the hand of God snatch me out of hell and my spirit went back into my body. Now. I, believe me, believe me, that is the most horrifying, terrifying experience that I've ever encountered. For whatever reason, I, uh, I pushed the envelope that day. I wound up ODing and lost a heartbeat and everything for over five minutes. And I fell into a really bad place. Um, what I experienced isn't what I've heard described. There was no white lights for me. I had this sensation of falling. There was the smell of sulfur. There was these loud, crunching, grinding sounds. You, I don't know if you want to say there were voices, but it sounded like screams and torment. I was shaking and trembling, and I turned my head to the right. <laughs> and they said I was dead. And they said that was there were 30 to 35 minutes. But I know that was a loving God that loved me so much. God loved me so much. He loved me so much that he gives me a second chance. And I'm here to tell the story. Not a story, but the true testimony. How awesome God is. And people will only listen. And don't take God for granted. For the first time in my life, a man that was totally self-sufficient. I relied on my own natural ability, my own strength. For the first time in my life, I called out to a God I didn't know and never served. I just said, God, please help me. I'm sorry, give me another chance. I didn't know what was happening. And all of a sudden, I felt this like grab on my collar and uh, just yanked me. And that's when I came to. 
I know now it was only the Lord. It could have only been Him that pulled me out and showed me His mercy. It is things like that that people like to pass out of their mind and say when I preach here, there can't be any real truth to that for God is a God of love. That's all I hear today. We're supposed to love ourselves and then appreciate the fact that God loves us because He is a God of love. Therefore, that we can live any way we please, we can live any kind of a life we want to, and there is no accountability at the end of our lives. You have believed a lie. Somebody has been messing with your mind. Now, what I'm preaching to you this morning about hell is not new. The message you're hearing from this preacher today is not new. This is what has been preached for 2,000 years. You just don't hear much of it today. And the reason you don't is because you live in the age of deception. You live in a time when men want your money. They're not interested in your soul. Because I've heard people say, it's not about money. It's about peace and it's about joy and it's about love. It's about money. Do you know why the people on your job really ain't Christians right now? Because you are preaching to them Jesus Christ. People ain't worrying about no blood or no cross. They worrying about how they gonna make it through the day. It's all about the money. It's all about the money. Show me the money. You don't even need an anointing. If you show money, you won't reap money. Right now, you need to make a vow of $5,000. A thousand doesn't get your faith going. You could do a thousand. You need to make a vow of $5,000. They don't care whether you, whether you die and go to hell or what. It doesn't matter to them one bit. And the reason they don't care whether you go to heaven or hell is because they are going to hell themselves. The pulpits in America are full of wolves in sheep's clothing that do not care for your soul. If a preacher will get up and preach to you like I am this morning, he will warn you, he will tell you that my friend, the soul that sinneth, it shall die. He will tell you the truth. I remember when I was a boy, I used to think about eternity. I used to sit around and think about forever and ever and ever. And it would always blow my mind. I always try to get something worked out and to figure where it's coming from and where it's going and to analyze it and break it down. But I could never get a hold of eternity and I still cannot get a hold of eternity it is beyond human comprehension but to think that if you die without God and without the Lord Jesus Christ that you're going to go off into eternity lost without God put yourself on that treadmill what if it was you that were taking your last breath on this earth what if you we're leaving planet Earth and you were about to die. My dear friend, you don't know when you're going to die. You don't know how long you're going to live. You don't know what tomorrow holds. You have no idea. And yet we live like we're going to live forever. It is this false sense of security that Satan has brainwashed men and women with that causes them not to think about their eternal soul. To die without the Lord Jesus Christ is a horrible horrible thing somebody said well now preacher hell is the grave is it really then my friend what is this talking about psalm 9 verse 17 the wicked shall be turned into hell and all nations that forget god that doesn't sound like a grave to me isaiah chapter 5 and verse 14 says therefore hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth you telling me the grave has enlarged itself? This earth has plenty of room for all the dead. Make no mistake about it, the necropolis is being filled up every day that you live. They're carrying caskets out here and they're playing taps or whatever they're doing. Somebody is dying right now while this preacher is preaching this message to you. Somebody is taking their last breath and they'll never breathe again on planet earth. It's over for them and they're either going to heaven or they're going to hell. 
Now men can hang all the accolades and awards on you. They want to. They can brag about you to high heaven. Make, uh, make it sound like you're the greatest thing on earth. But when you go out into eternity, there's just one that matters. There's only one that matters. There's just one name across that bar. On the other side of Jordan, there's a name above every name. And it's the name of Jesus. If you know him, my friend, you'll go to heaven. If you don't know him, you got no hope. You wind up in the pit. It doesn't matter if you live 150 years. It won't bother hell one bit. It's waiting. It has much patience. For it knows that every soul lost without God that departs from this world will enter into its mouth. You say, people, the preacher, you're, you're an alarmist. You're playing on our emotions. You're just, you know, you, 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 you're trying to hype this thing to get me emotionally involved. No, I'm trying to reach you. You're jaded. What's that mean, preacher? You've seen so many deaths, seen so much violence on television, heard so much with your ears, that it's to the point now where it takes a, a sledgehammer to reach inside and get by all of that and get down to where you live and talk to you. I prayed before I got up here this morning, Holy Ghost. I'm the messenger, Lord, but this is your service. Some of these people may hear what they're hearing for the last time on this earth. This may be their last opportunity to ever make it right with God. Now, folks, listen to me. Your friends can go eat with you. Your friends can go play with you. Your family can gather around the table. You can talk, converse, socialize, do all you want to. Everybody have all the friends, this, that, and so forth and so on. But when it comes to the time of crossing over from this world into eternity, you're going to do it alone. Let's talk about something else. It's called the cross. Jesus Christ, now listen carefully, did not die a horrible death on the cross for you to drive a new car. These godless prosperity preachers that spend all their time, all their time, godless as they can be, hear me and hear me well. There's only so much time left in this life and you hear me well. All they talk about is money, 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 money. And they don't know the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the cross, and salvation, and redemption, and the new birth. They know nothing about it. Where are they going, preacher? They're going to hell. They're going to hell, and they'll drag you down with them. I don't care if they're Pentecostal, Baptist, Lutheran, Episcopal. I don't care what they are. If all that preacher that you listen to talks about is money, what did Christ die for? They had money before he ever died. Long before he died. What did he die for then, preacher? He suffered the horror of the cross to keep you out of the horror of hell. I don't want to go to hell, preacher. I don't want to go. Well, I don't either. If you tell me this morning that you don't want to go to hell, you're showing me that you're still in your right mind. That you haven't been brainwashed and duped to the point now where you bought into this lie where everybody's good and everybody's the same and everybody's going to go to heaven. No, they're not. No, they're not. Well, how do I stay out of hell, preacher? There's only one that can keep you out of hell. Neither is there salvation in any other. There's no other name given among men whereby we must be saved. That's what Peter said. But the name of Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ, why don't you cry out to him today? Why don't you accept him now? Why don't you say, Lord Jesus, I don't want to go to hell. Save me. The motive might not be all that pure, but who you're coming to is pure. Think about that. Don't ever let some religionist hang something over your head and tell you and try to analyze you and break you down spiritually as to why you prayed and this and that. Just remember this. If any man comes unto me, I will in no wise cast him out. You come to the Lord Jesus Christ today. You come to him this morning. You get up out of that seat and you say, I don't want to lift up my eyes in hell. I don't want that to happen to me. I don't want to come down to the end of my life and look off into a dark eternity and not have a clue what lies on the other side. And the closer I get to it, the greater the terror grows. And then when the moment of light, when the moment comes where I cross over, there's something over there waiting on me. Go ask these atheists what's on the other side. I'll tell you something else to ask them. Ask them what life is. They don't have a clue. Yet they're so arrogant and so proud 
and they know it all, and we're so stupid to believe in a creator, yet they could not tell you what life means. The atheist, atheists used to be the ones who, who crawled around in the darkness, you know, and they didn't want to, but today it's, listen to me, let me tell you how what a fool you are for being a Christian. How intellectually deprived you are. How stupid you are to believe in God and to believe in the Bible and believe in eternity. Let me show you how smart I am. I listened to an atheist the other day and they said, he's a famous atheist. He wants you to know he's an atheist. He brags about it. His name's all over the internet. Oh, and they ask him now, what happens when you die? Because you're going to die. You know, there's no more of this cross the legs, sit back, cameras, lights, and you're the big name, big shot. When it comes down to the end, it's the end. You're looking at death. What are you going to do if you're wrong and there's a God out there? You know what his answer was? I'm going to ask him which God he is. And he named a few. Thor, Zeus, Baal, Mithras, Yahweh. I'm going to ask him. No, you won't. You're fooling yourself. Atheist, if you wake up in eternity and there's a God Almighty out there and you know you're approaching him, you're not going to bother asking anything. Here's what the Bible says about it. In Hebrews chapter number 10 and verse 31, it says it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a living God. Oh, don't lift up your eye in hell. Don't lift up your eyes in hell. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's not about me. Not, don't do it for me. Do it for yourself. Don't lift up your eyes in hell. Because if you do, it's too late. It's too late. Are you ready? Are you ready? Remember, folks, I'm just a messenger. And that's the message that he laid on this messenger's heart two days ago. And I couldn't get it off. I couldn't get away from it. I couldn't change it. I couldn't do a thing about it. But get up here this morning and give it out to you. Now I feel a great burden lifted off of my soul. Before you walk out this door right now, your spirit and soul could leave your body. Where are you going to go when you do leave this body? I want to ask you a question. Where are you going to go? Do you know you're saved today? Do you know your name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Do you know the blood of Jesus Christ, God's Son, has cleansed your sins away? Do you know that? Do you know that? Because if you don't know that, you're playing Russian roulette with your life. Did you know that the Lord Jesus Christ, when he went to the Cal cross at Calvary, that when he hung up on that tree, there he was nailed to that cross. What you saw at Calvary was a preview of the sinner's hell. Do you know that? You're looking at a preview of the sinner's hell. What do you mean, preacher? First of all, he was condemned. He was condemned to hang on that tree and all that go to hell are condemned. Secondly, he was, a, he, was, he was abandoned. He cried, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? All that go to hell will be abandoned. Third, the Bible said he became sin for us who knew no sin. I believe when the sinner goes to hell, it'll be a sin that eats him up for eternity. It'll be a sin, breathing it in and breathing it out. What he did, the opportunities to be saved, they'll never leave him. He'll think, my, my, my. Why didn't I walk that? Why didn't I get saved? Why didn't I bow on my knees before God? Did you know, my dear friend, that in hell, the name of God, the name of Jesus is everywhere you turn. You never heard such praying in your life as you'll hear in hell. Prayer meetings everywhere you turn, yet it's too late. It's too late. It's too late. It's too late. Now, while you can be, why don't you do something about it? While you can, why don't you get up and walk down here right now and say, Lord Jesus, I don't want to go to hell. Show me what I got to do. I don't want to go to hell. I do not want to go to hell. Why don't you do that? I did it in 1973. I'd do it again in a heartbeat if I had to, to, to stay out of hell. But I know when he saved me, he gave me eternal life and I should never perish. But if you're here this morning, you've never done that. I plead with you in the name of Jesus. Your blood won't be on my hands anymore. I've delivered my soul. I'm not guilty of your blood now. I've told you. And all of those that will hear this message later and are watching it right now over the internet, your blood is on your head and not mine. I've told you the truth. I've preached the word of God to you. I'm doing what I'm called to do. What's that preacher? I'm the messenger. That's far as I go. When it comes to the salvation of your soul, that's in the hands of God. I can't save you. Don't come to me to save you. Come to the Lord Jesus. 
Come to him and cry out to him, and he'll write your name in the Lamb's book of life. Bow your head with me this morning.